Hello and welcome to Squirrel Pie Productions. My name is Tommy and you can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Dynamite Trujillo. Welcome to episode 76 of my podcast. Thank you so much for joining me. If you are a new viewer, welcome to the program. And if you're a returning viewer, a big welcome back. Today is a beautiful spring, sunny, breezy day, Thursday in June here on the Northern California Coast where I'm coming to you from. We have a Ravelry group for this podcast that you should check out and join if you feel so inclined. It's where you'll find show notes for this episode and previous episodes. It's where you'll find knit along and giveaway kind of stuff. And we do have two giveaways to talk about today. One is ongoing. It's the spring sweater cowl where you can make sweaters this spring. It's going to end on the solstice. And uh, another one is over. It was the fiber along. And that is um, where you could work with fiber, be it spinning with it, weaving with it, belting with it, doing whatever you wanted with it. And that has ended. It ended on the last day of May. And I have two winners that I've chosen. I chose one winner from the Ravelry FO thread and another winner from Instagram. And thank you so much to everybody who participated. There was so much spinning happening in those threads and in those hashtags on Instagram. And it was really, really fun to check in with you all and see what you have been making with fiber. And I will announce the winners now. So from the Ravelry group, I did a random number generator and the winner of, I should show you the prizes. Okay, so the winner of this prize is going to get this. It's a loop bump. So I've chosen two uh, things of fiber from my fiber stash to give away as prizes for the fiber along. And the winner from the Ravelry group is going to win this loop bump in these colors. And the winner of this is Nature Knits Girl, who is Amy. And Amy entered a whole bunch of spinning into the fiber along. And so congratulations, Amy. Message me on Ravelry or Instagram or whatever. Let me know your mailing address and I will send your loop bump off to you. Congratulations. The winner of the Instagram post. So Instagram um, is a little different than Ravelry. Instead of using a random number generator, which would have been difficult, I closed my eyes and I went like this and then I picked on, I picked a post, just clicked on my phone like that, clicked on it. Am I showing my age? I touched my phone, just touch screen. <laughs> And whoever I landed on won the prize. The prize for the Instagram one is this braid of fiber by Moon Rover Fiber. Moon Rover is a company that I really, really love. I've spun up a couple of her braids in the past and I really enjoy them. So this one is um, merino nylon and bamboo. So the winner of this Moon Rover Fiber was... I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm working it out in my head right now. Hold up. Atro Atropos Knits. Atropos Knits. April, you won that braid of fiber. Congratulations. She spun up some beautiful yarn and it was pinky purple and I loved it. Congratulations, April. Message me wherever you um, feel like you want to. Let me know your mailing address and I will send your fiber off to you. Congratulations to both the winners and thank you again so much to everybody who participated in the make along. It was wonderful. Let's move on. So there is another make along that I want to just quickly let you know about here in case you haven't heard of it. Um, I am not hosting it, but I think it's really cool and I plan to participate in it. It is the Quiet Queers Craft Along. It's the craft along, right? Yeah, Quiet Queers Craft Along. That is the hashtag for Instagram where it is being hosted by Knitboop, who is you raw. And it is Pride Month in June. And I think that participating in a make along whose purpose is to support queer pattern writers, indie dyers, whatever, makers where you can support their 
businesses in taking part in this make-along I think is a really really great way to acknowledge and celebrate Pride Month. So I just thought I would mention that here uh, in case anybody's interested in taking part in that is being hosted on Instagram by Knit Boop. And if you are looking for a resource for queer makers that you can support. Um, through her Instagram, I discovered that there's somebody else who has uh, a stories highlight that highlights a bunch of queer makers that you can then go and find out what businesses that they have that you might want to support. And that person is Gummy Worm Belly, who is Jamie. So if you go to her Instagram, and check on the story highlights, you will find it there. So I think that's a really, really amazing make-along that's happening right now, and I would love it if we all uh, took part and supported that. Okay, moving on to my first FO. I am wearing it. I finished my Flora Cardi by Carrie Bostic Hogue. It was published in issue one of Making Magazine, and I knit this in Sincere Sheep Vernal in the Aegean colorway, and it is a 50-50, I think, linen silk blend. It's a lace weight yarn, and I had one skein of it, and here's what I had left over. So I used almost the whole skein, which is awesome. Um, this pattern called for a pretty small amount of yarn for the smallest size which is what I knit and I like how it came out a lot so let me get up and show you so here it is it was a bottom up short sleeved cardigan with lace panels down the fronts and it fits really nicely. The drape is really great on this yarn, and that about there is the length. I really like the length of it. Um, here is the back. I really like this V back here. I like it when sweaters do that. And you can see my short row shaping here. There's short row shaping for uh, the shoulders, and you can definitely see my short rows. But that's okay, I'm not too worried about it. Um, the sleeves are just worked right into the body with increases as you go up. And then there's this garter band that you pick up on each sleeve at the very end, which really, really finished the sleeves off really well. I really like that detail. Um, on the bottom hem too, it's also garter. And this yarn, since it's so thin and light and airy and it drapes so well, I really like how at the bottom, this front piece kind of comes down to like a point. And that is it. I really like how it came out. Um, it's, I think, going to be really nice and wearable in the summertime um, when you might wear a short sleeve thing like this. And it'll just be a nice little kind of overlayer over dresses and t-shirts and stuff. Right now I'm wearing it over a t-shirt. But I think it really looks good too over kind of... Uh, skater style jersey dresses. And I'm super happy I went back to it and finished it. I started this cardigan a pretty long time ago and then I put it down for a while and then uh, only picked it up a couple weeks ago. Really happy to get it off the needles and into my closet. It was a pretty easy make. Um, there isn't any waist shaping. So going up from the bottom up, it was just stockinette with these two really small lace panels at either end. And then uh, the sleeves, I think the sleeve looks better than the other sleeve. <laughs> um, the sleeves were really easy. It was just worked with increases after you split. And then at the end, you go through and from about here to here, you do mattress stitch, which isn't something I do that often because I don't often make knitted pieces um, that need to be seamed together. I don't often make sweaters in pieces. I usually do them seamlessly, I guess. <laughs> and um, But I have done mattress stitch in the past. And so I did that. It was pretty easy. Uh, the way that you do it, though, along this curve means that when you're mattress stitching, it's not just one straight up stitch that you're doing it on, which makes it really easy to know where you're picking up. 
since there's a curve, you end up working with introduced rows. So some of it you're working with a column and some you end up working with rows or just single stitches at the edge, if that makes sense. Uh, so it was a little sloppy the way I did it, a little fudgy, but that's okay. I mean, you it looks fine. You can't tell that it's like kind of, I made it up as I went. <laughs> um, it was really easy to do, it was really quick, uh, even though I don't have that much experience doing it. And I watched, um, I was watching a movie while I was mattress stitching, I remember. It's weird, the, the memory associations you have with certain things, but when I think about doing the finishing work on the sweater, I think about this movie, um, Shazam, I think it was called. It was a superhero movie uh, about foster kids, which it made me so, I had never heard of this superhero before, but it made me so happy that there is a superhero movie about foster kids. Uh, I just couldn't have been happier to watch that movie. I really, really liked it. Uh, so it's a really good superhero movie that I think is kind of recent if you're interested in that kind of thing. It's one of those, um, kind of fun superhero movies that doesn't take itself super seriously, which is definitely more my style of superhero movie, is the kind that doesn't take itself that seriously. It was really funny and really good. Anyway, that's what I was doing while I was mattress stitching my sleeves. <laughs> um, so I just really like that. I really like how simple this garment is. It's the construction was really basic, really simple, and it makes for a really simple, easy to wear piece that's really light and airy and flowy, and I enjoyed it. And I'm happy that it is done and I can wear it now. Uh, the color is this kind of aqua-y, sky-y blue kind of color, which isn't my favorite kind of color palette for clothing, uh, but I think if I wear it over darker clothing, it feels better to me. Uh, I don't typically wear a lot of light colors in clothing. I really like dark colors. Uh, so I'm right now I'm wearing it over a dark gray t-shirt. It also I think looks really good over my black and kind of charcoal-y kind of color uh, Stasia dress that I made a few weeks ago. So I will be wearing it over things like that in the summertime. And that is my Flora Cardi. So, my next finished object is a pair of Roll City Rollers Littles. This is a pattern by Mara Catherine Briner. And here they are. So, this is a pair of scrappy Rose City Rollers Littles for my daughter Lucy. I made the 9 to 12 month size, and they fit really great. I really, really like these socks for babies, for my baby. Um, I feel like they fit really well. They stay on really well. I really like a heel flap and gusset for babies. I mean, they never, ever slide down under her foot as she's, she's like trying to learn to walk and stand right now. So it's really nice to have a pair of socks that stays on. And I find that the just plain stockinette rolled cuff is really unfussy and really easy to wear for her. So um, I'm really happy with these socks. She's worn them quite a bit so far. I used three different mini skeins for these socks. So the cuff is one, and then from here to here is another one, and then from here to here is another one. And I'm not exactly sure what any of them are. Um, I think I might have known last week, but I threw away all the little tags, so I don't really remember. I'm pretty sure it's mostly made with regia yarn. Oh, you know what? I think I might remember. So I think the stripe up here is regia. I think down here is drops bobble. And then this one is another regia, I think. Or, yeah, I think so. And since they're all um, that kind of self-patterning yarn, each sock looks a little bit different, which I really like because I'm super into things that are not matchy-matchy. So they kind of match, but they kind of don't. So these are perfect, and I love them, and they're done. And now she has 
another pair of socks to wear. Um, yeah, that's it for those. Baby socks. And that's it for my FOs. We will move on now to works in progress. I have another pair of Rose City Rollers Littles on the needles because I'm trying to build up Lucy's sock collection. So I have the first one done of my new pair of, pair of Rose City Rollers Littles. Um, this is actually not even exactly the Rose City Rollers Littles. Um, I just call them that because it's got the rolled cuff. But this is uh, heavily modified. It's a DK weight sock and it's pretty much just it's top down. Um, I did 32 stitches on a size US 3 needle. The Rose City Rollers Littles is written for fingering weight yarn, so I kind of just, I stole the rolled cuff and then went out on my own. <laughs> just did a regular uh, heel flap and gusset sock. So the yarn that I used is this light pink here is this yarn. And this yarn was left over from a gift that was sent to me in the mail. My friend Julia, who is Nine Crafty Eleven, uh, sent me a birthday package. It was my birthday last week too, and it was so sweet and so unexpected. And she included a hat that she knit for Lucy, which is just the mother freaking cutest thing in the entire freaking world. And this is it. It's the, I think it's the dough pattern. It's from Making Magazine as well. And it's one of these little tie hats that I love, and it's got little ears on it. And it looks just crazy stupid adorable on Lucy. It is so awesome. So anyway, um, she knit her this hat and sent it to me, and then also sent me the leftovers in case I wanted to use the leftovers for anything, so I thought it would be perfect to make her a pair of matching socks. So thank you so much, Julia. You don't even know how much I love this hat. And now I get to make her some socks. So the yarn is Cleck Heaton Country Naturals 8 ply. It's 85% Australian wool, 10% acrylic, and 5% viscose. So that's it. It's a DK weight yarn, and it's this really pretty mauvey pink with um, tweed in it, and oh, it's so pretty. I really love it. And I didn't have quite enough to make a pair of socks, so I split the ball in half, and I used what I could, and then when I ran out, I supplemented with some Moonstone Dye Works that I had left over in my stash. This is the Merino DK in the Belladonna colorway. So it is a 32 stitch sock. I did a heel flap and gusset with the contrast color. And then I ran out of the pink and then uh, did the toe and a little bit of the foot with the Belladonna. So these are a little bit big on her right now, which is perfect. She can still wear big socks and then she'll grow into them. And they're really nice and thick and squishy. And I have not started the second one yet, but I will soon. And I think these colors look so good together. So, perfect. And if I did not mention it, I can't remember if I did or not, I'm knitting them on a size three. Magic loop, high, high, sharp. And they're living in my Cats with Antlers project bag. Yep, yep. So my next project is a pair of socks that I cast on for myself since the last episode I finished two pairs of socks. I instead of going into my sock whip bin I cast on a new pair because I really 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 wanted to. So my new socks are these right here. And I am using Fully Spun. which is a yarn that is dyed in the wool and then the wool is sent off to a mill to be spun. So it gets this really, really cool marled, almost hand spun looking effect. I really like it. It's a fingering weight yarn and this is the brunch colorway. Um, I 
don't have the tag because my daughter Lucy was playing with it and now I don't know where it is. But <laughs> uh, I really love how the socks are knitting up. Uh, so far the colors are pinks and purples and whites and then it's going into this purple and mustard section. And I did a top down sock I cast on 64 stitches, two by two ribbing for the cuff and then uh, heel flap and gusset. And I did my heel flap, uh, slip stitch heel flap, which is what I typically do. I did it over 17 slip stitches. So twice that many rows is how long my heel flap is. Um, and I did my heel turn. And now I have just started picking up the gusset stitches and I'm gonna start decreasing down and then I can do the foot and then I am on my way to some socks. Um, so this yarn has different color sections, obviously, and I started getting, twice in the sock, I started getting like I wanted to move on to the next color section, so I cut out a little bit. Um, right here, this purple and white section was going on a little too long for me, so I wound off a little bit of that. And then when I started the gusset, or I'm sorry, when I started the heel, I was kind of here in this purplish, yellowish section. And when I got down here, which is the point where I was about to go along and pick up stitches again, not pick up stitches, but just continue on the foot, um, it was in this solid mustard section. And so if I left it like that, it was just gonna be an abrupt line of solid mustard before going back into this mustard and purple section. So I just wound off all the solid mustard um, to kind of hopefully make it look a little more continuous. And I think that's gonna work out just fine. So I'm gonna have these two little balls of leftovers in case I need them for anything. And I love how these are knitting up. This yarn is really nice. It's a two ply and it's merino, or actually I don't know if it's merino, it's wool and nylon. Um, again, my daughter lost the tag. So, um, but I really like this yarn. I believe it is a superwash, but it does feel pretty wooly, which I really, really like. And I really like how they're coming out. And I'm doing them on a size zero needle, which is kind of my new thing. Magic loop on my Chiyogu mini twist interchangeables. So. I am super into these socks. I'm really excited for the second sock where I'm gonna get to this middle part, which is pink. And I'm gonna, for the second sock, I'm gonna start from the inside and knit top down from this end so that I get pink at the top. Super excited. So these are living in my project bag, which was made for me by my swap partner who sent me this yarn. So. It matches perfectly, and I love it. Next up, living in my hot pink kitty cats bag, which was also a gift from a wonderful friend. Hello, Unyoung, and thank you. I am knitting a spiral blanket of awesome. I cast all of my whips are new cast-ons. <laughs> um, so I cast on a spiral blanket of awesome for my friend Sarah, who is having a baby. She is due this month, and I know I'm super late on my baby blanket gift for her, but oh well. <laughs> and um, the Spiral Blanket of Awesome is a pattern by Sharon McMahone, and it's kind of my favorite go-to baby thing. I really, really like this blanket. Uh, I have one for Lucy, I've made one for a friend in the past, and here is my third version. So here it is so far. I've gotten a lot of work done on it in a pretty short amount of time. I have been pretty monogamous on this since I started it because I really want to get it done as fast as I can so I can send it in the mail to her. So the yarn that I'm using, the first cake is this Dream in Color Everlasting 12 ply DK yarn. And the colorway isn't a real colorway. It's called November 2014 Club. <laughs> and here's the tag. This yarn is really pretty interesting. Uh, I am pretty unfamiliar with this ply structure, 
but it's really, really bouncy. And it's very elastic-y. It's 12 plies, right? So pretty much what it is, and I noticed this right away when I started working with it because it was a little, it took a little getting used to, but it's three, no, it's okay. So it's four strands of three ply, of three ply. So there's, say you have like a three ply yarn and then you have four of those and then those are all plied together in the opposite direction. So that's what this yarn is. That's the construction of it. It is very, very interesting. And it is very splitty and it has a lot of energy to it. So that means the twist is really like amped up in this yarn. Um, it can twist back up on itself really easy as I'm knitting with it, which was really annoying at first, but then I kind of got into a groove of like, pretty much for some reason putting my cake of yarn on the floor and then pulling up from it as I work with it kept it from not getting twisted up on itself but it's got a lot of energy this yarn does um but the fabric is knitting up really nice and really bouncy and I really like how this yarn feels it's a hundred percent Australian I think hundred percent superwash Australian merino wool so I love the fabric. I love the colorway. It's this um, colorway with a lot of browns and purples. And I think my friend Sarah is really going to like it. I've got a cookie progress keeper on it. And so this one is almost out. Uh, once this is over, I'm going to introduce this next cake of yarn, which is an old Moonstone Dyeworks experiment that never really went anywhere. Um, it's on my Merino DK base and it's pretty much a, it's a speckled like brown and like teal and like sometimes orange kind of colorway. Um, I did not write down the formula for this, but if you are interested in this as a colorway, let me know and I will do my best to recreate it. I'm pretty sure I could get pretty close, but uh, this was a one-off from a while ago. So I think it'll look pretty good with this one, with the browns. I'm knitting this on a size six. It's my Lick It Interchangeable Mini Tips, and I'm really enjoying it. Uh, the nice thing about this pattern is it's more like a recipe, so you can use it with any weight of yarn that you want, any gauge that you want. Um, you pick you pick the gauge that you enjoy and you make it as big as you want. So I really, really like this pattern. It's gonna make a circular blanket and I use Lucy's almost every single day, mostly as like a stroller blanket. And the way this blanket is constructed, it is a free pattern on Ravelry, um, is it's just stockinette in the round and you do increases every other round. And the way the increases are done is just yarn overs at certain points. So you end up getting this kind of spiral pattern of your yarn overs and it's great. It's fun. It's simple and easy and really easy to memorize. I don't have to use, um, I don't have to keep track of my rows or do any counting. I just increase when I get to the previous increases and it's super simple. I really like it. I have, um, two other people in, uh, my life that are having babies right now. And so I would really like to make blankets for all of them, but I don't know. I don't know if that's gonna happen, but this one's happening for sure. <laughs> so after that, my next two works in progresses are two new sweaters. And the first one is uh, one that I think I talked about last time. I'm pretty sure I've talked about it in the past. I've wanted to knit this sweater for a while. It is the Ranunculus sweater. And here it is. I am knitting it in this Julie Aslan Nurtured Fine yarn. And this is a light fingering to lace weight yarn. It's a single ply and it is 100% fine wool. Rambouillet, Targi, and Merino. 
and here's the tag. It's in the Tissane colorway. And I love it. I really like it. It's very, um, it's very, for lack of a better word, I don't much like the word rustic because I don't feel like it actually describes anything, but it's an easy word to use. It's very rustic. And <laughs> I really am really enjoying working with it. And here's what I've got so far. I love it. I love it. So the Ranunculus sweater is a pattern by Knit Cafe Midori. Uh, her name is Midori Hirose. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. I very well could be. But uh, it's a top-down lace yoked top. And I am past the lace. I just have stockinette to go now. You have the option to do short sleeves or long sleeves. And you can do cropped or not cropped. So I did only vaguely swatch for this. Um, I did a pretty small swatch. I washed it and I blocked it, but I kept it attached to the cake so that when I was done, I could rip it out and re-add it to the cake. And um, I pretty much got gauge. She calls for, I think, a 10 or a 10 and a half needle, and I can't remember what the gauge is that she calls for. But even though I got gauge on my dinky swatch, which probably wasn't good enough, um, I went. I decided to go down a needle size. Um, the pattern is written for one size and the finished bust measurement according to the gauge in the pattern is like 50 inches or 51 and so I decided to go down a needle size just because it felt right. I don't know. <laughs> um, and it's just written for the one size but she did, the designer did later on come out with an extra download for larger additional bust sizes so that you could um, grade it up. I think in the raglan section, I'm not sure, but I decided to go down in needle size and it's working out pretty good, I think. Um, I have tried it on a few times. I've taken it off the needles, put it on waist yarn, I think about four times so far just to make sure because I wanted to make sure the yoke was deep enough and the armhole was big enough. And it is, so I think it's gonna fit pretty good. I think it's gonna fit in an oversized way. And the gauge is really, really loose. The gauge called for is pretty loose. And so it's really open and really airy. And here is the lace yoke section. And I really like how it came out. Um, it's a single ply yarn, which I don't think is the best for lace work, like in a technical sense, but you know, I'm not a technical sense kind of person when it comes to knitting. So <laughs> I really think it's going to be really cool. I really like how open and airy the gauge is. Um, I like, I think I'm going to like how it fits. We'll see. I don't even know. Like who, I don't even know. I just, all my decisions in this have been pretty slapdash, so we'll see. Uh, but I am again using my Licka short tips. Like I said, I'm using a size nine. And I'm done with all the yoke parts, so now all I gotta do is knit some straight stockinette until it's long enough. I think I'm gonna go for kind of a cropped length. And what I'm pretty sure I'm gonna end up doing, because I only have this one cake, the cake came in like, let's see. 780 yards. So I think I'm going to have enough to do a cropped long sleeve version of this top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the body at a certain point, put it on waist yarn, and then knit the sleeves to the length that I want. And if I have any leftover yarn, I might add it to the body. We'll see. But um, I really like it so far. I love this yarn. I love the color. And uh, I'm pretty excited about it. This lace was really, really fun to work. I got through this yoke really quick because I was just really kind of addicted to it. Um, and there are short rows for the front and the back right above the lace. One of the options for this sweater is the neckline. You have an option to do a wide neckline or like a crew neck. And I kind of disregarded both instructions and did my own thing. <laughs> Of course, another one of my decisions in this pattern, that's just like, who knows why I made that decision? I don't know. But um, what I did is just a regular long tail German twisted cast on. And um, I think it's going to get me probably somewhere in between. I don't know. We'll see. Like I said, I've tried it on 
and it comes pretty close to my neck, but I don't have the stretch of the sweater like sitting under my arms or anything quite yet, or like it hasn't been blocked yet. So I'm not quite sure how it's gonna end up, if it's gonna be a wide neckline or crew neckline. <laughs> but I really am enjoying working on this. I'm really glad I cast it on. I've been wanting to make this for quite a while. And that's it for that. My last work in progress is another sweater. I'm really excited about this one. It's living in my woodsy and wild bag. Um, something I got in my birthday package from Julia was this super cute koala pin. I love it. Um, also, I got this for my birthday from Colin. It says gold dust woman. Um, so living in this bag, out of this yarn, which is Moonstone Dioric's Merino Decay in the tendril colorway. Uh, the last few times you've seen it was the Virginia pullover. And if you remember, I knit most of that pullover and had to rip it out because I knit a size too small. So last week I recast on the sweater in the next size up and I got not too far on it, maybe about that much into like the front rectangle piece or whatever. And I just decided I wasn't feeling it anymore. And at the same, and so I was like, I put it down for a little while. I thought maybe I'll just rip it out again and do something else with the yarn. I didn't know what though. I kind of scoured Ravelry for other DK weight patterns that maybe I could do um, while at the same time, but in a separate part of my brain, I was scouring my stash to try to find yarn in my stash that might fit the Ursa pattern, which is a pattern by Jacqueline Sislak. Sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong, I'm not sure. Um, because I really wanted to knit an Ursa and I don't have any bulky weight yarn. So I was like, what can I do to like make it work? for this sweater. After like a day of doing both of these things separately, it all clicked and I decided I could hold my DK wet yarn double for a bulky gauge and make the Ursa with this yarn. So that's what I'm doing. I ripped out my Virginia version two and I cast on the Ursa sweater holding um, that yarn double. So here it is. I'm really pretty excited about this. I really like this sweater and I really like how it's working up. So if you are interested in seeing, here is what ended up happening with my Virginia sweater. I pulled it all out and because I was alternating skeins and like I had constructed a bunch of parts of the sweater already, I ended up with a whole bunch of teeny tiny little balls of yarn and it is all spaghetti e, and I'm not rescaining and blocking it so I am working with it as it is which is fine it doesn't bother me so I've got the equivalent of four skeins here all in pieced up form um, I think that'll be enough but if not I can just break into another skein and oh, I love it so I did swatch for this as well um, and I mostly got gauge. My gauge is a teeny bit smaller than the pattern uh, recommends, but I think it's gonna be fine. I am knitting the smallest size on a size US 10 and a half needle. I swatched with a 10 and a half and an 11 just to see. Uh, the pattern calls for a 10 and a half, and I liked the fabric better on the 10 and a half, and I got, I still got pretty close gauge. I think I got better gauge with the 11, but it was just too open and too big. Um, so I decided to go with a smaller needle. I'm slightly under gauge, but that is okay. I think it's gonna be fine. And I cast on, yeah. So here it is. Oh, I love it. I love how it's working up. So with the Virginia, I was alternating skeins because it's hand dyed yarn and that is the smart thing to do. But with the Ursa, since I'm holding it double, I don't have to alternate skeins because that serves the same purpose. Score. So 
This is a really amazing pattern. It's a cropped long sleeve sweater. It's a really great size inclusive pattern. Um, and it's made with stockinette and brioche. So it's got this brioche stitch running straight down the back. It's got brioche on the raglan increases. And then in the stomach area, it's gonna have a triangle of brioche and it looks really, really cool. So I'm super excited about this. I, again, with this one, I've tried it on. I took it off the needles and um, put it on waist yard and tried it on a couple times before separating for the sleeves because since my gauge was a little bit off, I wanted to make sure the sleeve holes were big enough and that the yoke itself was deep enough. And it fits good, so I think it's gonna be awesome. Uh, the nice thing about this pattern as well is that there's no finishing, I think, on the neck, so that's pretty exciting. Um, so this is what the raw edge looks like, and I'm pretty sure it's just gonna stay that way. I do kind of wish, though, that since that's the raw edge that since that's the raw edge that's going to stay that way it had called for slip stitches which i just think looks a little cleaner looks a little neater um but that's okay it's fine i could have added it in added them in but i didn't and i mean it looks totally good so this upper part here has worked flat and then once you get to the point of the v-neck it's joined in the round so i just joined in the round like a round or two ago and at this point I'm kind of at the same point as on my ranunculus it's just straight down until I am done and uh, there's gonna be some brioche that kind of like blooms out of the stockinette and it's gonna be really cool so I'm really enjoying this project I'm really happy that I decided to go with this sweater instead the Virginia is a great sweater. It's simple and it's beautiful, but this was just kind of calling to me right now. And I'm pretty excited about it. I'm just kind of into the idea of long sleeved crop sweaters right now. I think I'm gonna like that style over longer like tunics and dresses and things like that. So here's my Ursa and I love it. And that, my friends, is it for my knitting. I cast on like everything <laughs> these past couple weeks. It just happened, I don't know, it just happened. So the one last making thing that I have to talk about is a weaving project. So I was working on a round weaving a while ago and I finally kind of finished it. I still haven't done like the finishing work on it, but I made this guy. So this is a weaving and I used hand spun for all of it. The green is some spunky eclectic fin wool. And then the purple here is uh, some really old hand spun that was like alpaca and like a bunch of like sparkle fibers and stuff like that. So I did a round weaving and I made a moon and I'm really really happy with it. So pretty much what I did is I took this metal hoop and I just I warped it really sloppy as you can tell like super sloppy <laughs> with just some cotton like lace weight yarn and I started weaving right at the center. I've never woven anything before. I just kind of went for it. Uh, I was inspired by Kalisha of the Crafty Monday, Corky Monday Craftcast podcast uh, when she did a round weaving a while ago and I just decided I wanted to do it so I just did it and I did not know what I was doing and it's not the best in the world but it's pretty cool still, I really like it. I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do. Um, so, I I don't wanna, my original intention was to leave it in this hoop and just hang it like this, but because my warps, whatever's, are so sloppy, I don't think I'm gonna do that. And because I ended up making a pretty small weaving, I would think I was originally planning on like making it much bigger. 
Um, but I decided to stop here because I just like the way it looks as it is now and I didn't want to make it any different. So I think what I'm going to do is cut it off the hoop and then I'm not sure what to do from there. So we'll see. I haven't cut it off yet because I'm kind of scared. But um, that's all I know so far is that I'm done with the actual weaving and I'm pretty proud of myself for creating this moon. I, I don't know. I mean, like, I know what I did, but it's kind of hard to explain. Like, I just stopped with the green and I introduced the purple. And I wove almost in a whole circle, but not quite. And then I just turned around and went back. And I did that. And I kept doing that until I liked the way it looked. And then I just cut off the purple and then kept going with the green around it. And like, if you look at the back, like, see, this is where I just stopped with the purple. And so that's what it looks like. And my first weaving project is done, is almost done. So somehow I'm going to make this into a wall hanging. I'm not quite sure how yet, but it's going to happen. And I love it. Okay, that's everything I've been making. I am going to talk just a tiny bit about shop update now. I will be right back while I go get my yarn. So I am the dyer behind Moonstone Dye Works uh, at moonstonedyeworks.com. There's also a link in the description box below. And I dyed a new colorway that I have added to the shop, so it is there now if you're interested. And here it is. This is Bad Ideas. And this is it on BFL sock. And I also dyed it up on Natural Merino. And uh, Natural Merino is my fingering weight non-superwash 100% Falkland Merino yarn. And I love it. So this is available now in the Moonstone Dye Works shop. And there is also a sale happening right now. Um, everything in the shop is 20% off and you don't need a coupon code. The discount will automatically be applied to your cart at checkout. So this will be on sale as will be everything else that's currently in the shop. And that is just a way for me to say thank you to everybody who supports Moonstone Dye Works and um, if you're interested in this colorway or anything else, go check that out and thank you. Okay, moving on to favorites. Um, last couple weeks have been pretty fun. Uh, my friend Jillian from the Good Witch Knits podcast was traveling through my town and so we got to meet up for um, a late morning coffee date and knit a little bit and that was really, really amazing. Um, it was really exciting that somebody came through Arcata because the town that I live, Arcata, is a pretty small town in very far northern California and not many people travel through this way um, unless you're kind of specifically going to like the Redwoods in northern California. Um, so that was so much fun. Thank you for stopping by, Jillian, and uh, hanging out with me for a little bit on your vacation and I hope you had a really great time. Um, and then it was my birthday a few days later, and that was really fun. The evening of my birthday, uh, Colin and I went out to dinner, and that was really fun. Like, my favorite thing in the whole entire world is getting taken out to dinner. I don't even care where it is. I just love going out to dinner. So that was really great. And then we went out to um, a bar afterwards and had some drinks with friends, and that was really fun as well. I had a great birthday. I always have a great birthday. I love my birthday. And um, along with the hat that my friend Julia sent me, she sent me a package with some birthday goodies in it, including this kit that she got me for my birthday. And this is a weaving kit. It is so cool. It's from Valley Maker. And Valley Maker is out of Australia, I believe. Victoria. And this kit is put together by the person who runs Valley Maker. And she dyes all these yarns and then puts, gives you this little like flower loom. So this is definitely going to be played with pretty soon. Um, 
And that is pretty much it. I think I will leave you guys there. Thank you so much for watching and for spending a little bit of time with me. I hope you have been making things and drinking lovely beverages and eating wonderful yummy food and enjoying the spring. Um, if you enjoyed the video, please do uh, like and subscribe if you're interested in keeping up to date with future episodes. Join in the spring sweater cal and make all the sweaters the way I am doing. <laughs> and uh, have fun and stay awesome. Bye!